Hey, Rockhound here. Automaton, well, the developer of Mavericks Proving Grounds, have put out a new question and answer video, mostly covering the upcoming game testing period known as Mavericks The Forge. Well, this is probably one of the simplest development videos in terms of production quality that they've released about the game so far. It may be viewed down the track as one of the most important. The community, myself included, have been asking the devs for more regular updates and I'm delighted to see that they have heard us and are responding accordingly. Hopefully these will be done weekly from now on. So what I thought I would do is run through the video and stop it along the way to give you my thoughts and opinions about the questions and answers as we go. I know that many of you may not agree with everything I think, so please let me know your thoughts. Hopefully this video will encourage some active discussion about what people want to see in the game. Right, let's go. Firstly, a massive thumbs up to the person that designed the little intro animation for Mavericks the Forge. It looks awesome. Whoever that person is, if you're available for freelance work, please get in touch because I want one too. Anyhow, let's get into the questions. Hey guys, this is going to be our First Q&A that we'll be taking questions from the community over the course of Reddit and our forums and whatnot. And today we've gathered a bunch of them from our forums and Reddit. And yeah, we're gonna just get straight into this and see if we can clear up a couple issues that you guys have had and questions that you've thought, thought of and processes that we need to go through. It's great that they're taking community questions from multiple places because not everyone hangs out in the Mavericks Discord. For this q and I'd say there were particular questions that the devs wanted to answer to address hot topics of discussion amongst the community. However, I hope also that for future videos they have a more formal place that we know that we can post random questions and that those will get answered as well. Um, so first of all, is there an updated roadmap for the major game milestones right the way through the BR and MMO mode? So. I think this question comes because um, on our original website we had a roadmap page which talked about a number of you know, things we intended to do in each month kind of towards the end of the year. The reason we decided to move away from having that as a kind of thing on our website and how we talked to, the, you know, to everyone in the community uh, is because since then we've really adjusted our focus to having really effective regular weekly updates and we've kind of been building both technology and how the team kind of works together in a way where we can be really great at delivering kind of regular content updates um, and being quite smart about how we react to kind of feedback and, uh, and seeing the effects of what we put in the game. And because of all of this kind of focus and how rapid our iteration cycle is, um, kind of saying what we're going to be doing like two months down the line um, is, you know, kind of something we could still do. but. Um, at the end of the day, right, we'll be learning stuff so rapidly um, that in fact we might want to change our plans for a couple of months' time. Uh, and so we want to put the priority on sharing with you what we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks because there'll be so much in that anyway um, and sort of making it clear that we're listening to you and, and what, we're, what we're putting in kind of on that more rapid timeline. Um, so we've mentioned that we do have kind of core updates and rapid updates, the rapid ones we're looking at doing weekly, uh, core every one to two months. And so uh, we'll still be talking about that. Um, but doing anything further with the roadmap, I, I think is like something we're, we've moved away from because I think the, the new process makes a lot more sense, enables us to kind of be uh, far more consistent and data driven so that we can give you much more kind of accurate and detailed uh, idea of what we're doing in a one to two week period than we could um, if we kind of just gave you the rough milestones. Um, so just kind of being more involved with the community means that, you know, let's not talk about kind of too much about the next kind of six, 12 months other than, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen and we'll focus on talking about like the details for the next couple of weeks. Um, I guess another um, question that's kind of come up around uh, kind of the major milestones is about uh, how the forge and the game type we're building uh, relates to kind of the launch of the game and the kind of the, the game modes that will happen in the final version of Mavericks. Um, so our whole new approach and what we've changed is that um, we are now no longer saying, you know, uh, yet the date at which we're going to uh, launch the game in full. Uh, very shortly and before the end of the year, we will, of course, you know, we're doing the forge and we're going to be expanding that out to the public anyway. Um, we see the forge as basically us building 
a particular, a first uh, game type, a 1,000 player battle royale game type. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about and focusing on with the community for the next few weeks. Um, until the point at which you know we feel that's kind of uh, ready and that we've like seen that process through, uh, the launch version of Mavericks will then still have these other game types and um, and you know this process will continue as and we will still do regular updates. We'll still evaluate what the community um, you know thinks is best and also you know, fundamentally what people are playing, right? Not just kind of yeah. what a minority of people say is good, but fundamentally what people want to play. And because we set up systems that enable us to do this so rapidly, we'll be able to test out all of these different game modes we've talked about. You know, the different varieties you might be interested in, whether it's first person, third person, whether it's to do with how people drop into the map, how many players in the game. And we can support up to a thousand players drop, dropping into the game in one go. Like, we, the Mavericks yeah, will be able to do that. We are... questions about that as well. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, I should say that, you know, with this upcoming Forge launch initially, um, that we will be, you know, still testing a few fundamental pieces of technology and we, we might ramp, you know, some numbers up over the course of a couple of weeks rather than just kind of throw everyone in in one go. So there was quite a lot of info from James there. He's clearly keen for you to know more about the game. I think the overall takeaway from his answer is that as players, we should keep an open mind, especially in the initial few weeks to months as changes to the game, well, based on lots of data and feedback, are going to be rapid and almost certainly significant. Although one thing that has been asked that we need to clarify is, you know, there were some mentions of uh, whether all founders would get to access the game yeah, in one the, go. Yeah, the 1,000 um, player stress test that it has mm -hmm. since been dubbed in the Discord was something that was yes. brought up a fair bit. Um, so we've communicated when we'll launch the Forge and that's what we're aiming for for all founders initially. That doesn't mean we won't necessarily be trying out, um, you know, stress tests, but, um, you know, that's something which, you know, we're doing with a, a number of people internally and, and testing. Um, so that, just to clarify, there is no longer a 1,000 player invite for certain founders before other founders? Not in what we've announced. That doesn't mean that we wouldn't consider that, you know, a few days before if we thought it was the right thing to do, that we might select a few people in randomly, but um, that's not something that we're committed to doing right now. And, you know, I, to be fair, like, you know, I need to talk to the team next week about the readiness and, and where we're at. We'll communicate that to the community too. If we feel like we need some kinds of tests, we might potentially still go that route. But no, at the moment, that's not the case. And we'll be launching kind of to all founders. Um, if we feel that, you know, like a load of founders have flooded in, like there may be a cap in concurrent players, but we're trying to set that high enough so that, um, it doesn't you know, mean that you have to wait to play if yeah. you're a founder. Obviously not all, all founders are gonna just decide to play immediately at the same time. Um, we'll be able to handle that if they do, but we might require you kind of uh, to wait, but we don't see that being a problem. As I said, like, uh, basically the first couple of weeks, of course, uh, as with any kind of big launch of a new, a new platform, um, come with you know, a number of unknowns. And so uh, we will focus on getting a core consistent stable base and expanding it out. Um, so yeah, so th there might be a couple, you know, adjustments to uh, how many people can play, let in, just for the first week or two. Um, but you know, at the moment, what we're expecting is that we'll enable all founders access, um, and there will be no kind of need for previous tests. Yeah. We're doing a lot of that internally right now, anyway. Excellent. Excellent. When the forge was first announced, Automaton sent out a survey to founders from which they were going to select 1,000 players to stress test the game for a week or more. This received a mixed reaction from the community and was dropped about a week ago. From James' comment, it sounds like a few founders might essentially become ring-ins for some in-house testing, if it's needed, before other founders can join the game on September 20. I think this is really no big deal, and if they need a few hours of testing done, and some of us get a crack at that before all the founders are on board, that's just going to be for the benefit of everyone. And I would expect that those people would have to sign a total non-disclosure agreement anyway, so you may not even know that it happened. May I have your attention please? The City of New York would like to thank you for participating in our drill. Question number two. Uh, with the player drop being scattered through the game, is it still possible to have 1,000 players in a server at once, or will the plane drop the next set of players when the kill count gets down from, for example, no more than 200 players alive at any point, mm -hmm. but 1,000 players over the course of the entire game? This was a very good question. I think with the introduction of wave deployment, 
many people will want to know that it isn't just a workaround for technical difficulties with high player numbers. Yes, yeah, so we're looking at a thousand players over the course of the entire game. That's not because we can't drop a thousand people in at the beginning, because you know that is something we're going to support. But um, there are a number of other benefits to dropping in, kind of in stages. Exactly how many stages? Now, we're actually currently looking at uh, two uh, drops, but these numbers and how long you can drop for as well. Like you know, you can spend a few minutes kind of in the drop pool thinking, oh, I'm seeing where some people have gone. Like, do I want to drop there? It's interesting that James reveals here that from within the deployment hall, you'll actually be able to see where people are going to on the map. Now, either there's some sort of screen that you can watch for that information, or it actually might sound like the entire deployment hall is somehow airborne. I guess we'll just have to wait and see which of those two it might be, or it could be something else altogether. That whole dynamic of kind of um, how many, when, and what the distribution is of when players can do, um, Join is something we're balancing, and it's not actually a technical constraint in terms of like we can support yeah, uh, yeah, huge uh, numbers of players. It's more we want to make sure that we deliver something that is uh, well balanced, fun, enables this kind of awesome idea of you know uh, people dropping in that little bit later, so another wave comes in. It's more uh, than just a regular BR mode scaled up. Yes, uh, that's uh, yeah, that's uh, the main thing. I guess on top of that as well, of course, the big benefit, the other big benefit. Um, isn't exactly technical, but it is good for uh, matchmaking, really, right? Like if if you can, if there there's kind of this more stretched out period in, into which you can drop into the game, um, it means dramatically uh, faster. Yeah, you uh, can times. hop into an already existing game. You've not got to wait in queue times. You've not yeah. got to wait for things to yeah. fill up. Which... And that's really important in the Forge, of course, because you know while we've had a huge amount of excitement about Mavericks and we're confident we'll have a lot of players. Um, Initially, we're, we're only going to be testing it with a smaller cohort, right? And we need to do as many games as possible to make sure that Mavericks is fun to play. So it will really help with that as well, because, you know, per player, we can produce more games because of the way in which they're interacting with the game. Mm -hmm. They don't have to wait. Um, and that means simply testing more, more kind of varieties of gameplay, which is obviously a big part of why we're doing The Forge. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm sold on the idea. I'm also sold on the idea. I think that wave deployment could potentially be an absolute masterstroke from Automaton. Having little to no wait time will appeal to a lot of players and especially to streamers. It could be a PUBG killer. Now we can discuss the ins and outs of balancing wave deployment in the game until the cows come home, but really none of us have an idea of what it's going to be like until we actually test it in game. I thought there was going to be a 400 player BR mode and a 1000 player MMO mode. Mm. Is this still the case for the MMO or are they kind of combined now? In the Forge they're combined. That doesn't mean we won't have other BR like modes depending on popularity. We can easily support that stuff. Um, but in the Forge we're focusing on building a particular game type with you that brings these ideas all together. Excellent. That was quick and easy. That's what I like. Now that answer was quick and easy. However, I'm not really sure what it actually means. If they're combining Battle Royale and MMO, does that mean that we're actually looking at a completely new game genre for the Forge? I'd like to know more about how the MMO part gets included. For instance, I'm really keen to explore the Mavericks world outside of Battle Royale sessions to learn the map better. However, will there also be some MMO gameplay right from the start? I guess that might be a question for the next Q&A. Um. What regions are the Forge and final game servers going to be in? Um, not quite yet ready to say what the final game will have. Of course, it will be across many continents. Um, the Forge, we're currently looking at a Europe and North America deployment. So two deployments. Okay. Um, that's by no means final. That's just kind of letting you know um, the plan as it stands right now. Um, so it won't it will be it, it won't be kind of the full variety of deployments but we do know the distribution of where our founders are and kind of there's you know a number where of, the demand is where, where, where the majority of. are of course we have founders from all over the world so unfortunately we won't get it in every territory um for the first test although you will be able to connect of course um so yeah just the update at the moment is that we're looking at a couple places of deployments for the initial forge launch and we'll expand it from there excellent i think this is going to be okay I live in New Zealand, which is about as far as you can get from most servers, and in the last few days I've been playing the Battlefield 5 beta 
with a ping of around 155 to North American servers, and that's been fine to play, so I don't see any problems here. Um, how many weapons are aimed to be in by launch? Now, I suppose we, this is clarifying mm. the difference between forge and launch, because yes. not yes. everything is going to be in for forge from what no. I've gathered. No, um, and actually I don't know how many weapons will be in by launch, because that we could make a lot of weapons, yeah, but thanks. we won't just be making weapons for the sake of weapons, and that's the point of the forge, right? We'll see what the role of each of these guns is, and that's why we're starting with just a few, and then adding and seeing how that affects the game. Um, I would be surprised if we didn't have every gun that is a staple that yeah, you know, for most expect. shooters, if you <laughs> yeah. want to be able to pick something up and recognize yeah. it, and yeah. but but then again, like we'll see what works. What I mean, gaps need I filled. might be wrong. Maybe everyone hates a particular gun that every other game has, and we just realize that it's bad. Yeah, you know, the AK is just completely <laughs> out of fashion now. Nobody wants to. Yeah, nobody yeah. wants to touch that. Um, um, and the forge, we know how many are going in for the forge. Uh, as far as I'm aware, first week of the forge, mm -hmm. there's an initial three guns that we're evaluating with. Okay. Um, but we'll be adding some more pretty rapidly after that. Um, I'm not entire like that might be subject to change, but that's what I think at the moment. Okay, three uh, three is fine as long as we can fi we can find what gaps need filling is the other thing. Once yeah, we have a we have a number more guns we've already built um, with previous kind of beta like demos of the game mm -hmm. that we could put in. Um, I believe we've done the order of ten different guns. So although we'll be launching with a smaller number. Um, you know, you'd be surprised how quickly we can add yeah, more content into the game. Easy to get added. That's something else for the founders. If you head over to the community forums in the founder section, we've put out some skins and a poll on the skins. For which ones you would personally like to see in game? Um, those are for the MP5 and the AK. They are mm. legendary skins. They are big, flamboyant. They are incredible looking. So go ahead, check out the forums and vote on those as well. If you would like a, a look at good models and such that are over there as well. Okay, from Sam's comment about the gun skins, my guess is that the first three guns will be the AK-47, the MP5, and one other. Now James has mentioned in the Mavericks Discord fairly recently that the team were currently working on shotgun balancing, so it may be a shotgun that's included, although we'll probably also need to see a sidearm fairly early on as well, so who knows. What it does sound like though is that from week two of the forge we're bound to see more guns being included. This one was kind of answered in the first one, but just to expand on, where did the roadmap go and will there be any changes to the release date of Maverick's Proven Ground, which was scheduled for the end of the year? Um, so the answer to whether we launch at the end of the year at the moment is simply we're going to look at the Forge and, and decide what we think is launch ready. Yes. Now the game is going to be out at that point. Yeah, it's you know, still like playable. You can, play, you can play it and it will be substantially evolved even from what we launch, of course, um, right now, like very shortly with the Forge launch. Um, so there's going to be a game that's just going to get better and better. What we call the launch and it going to, you know, potentially to other platforms and, and kind of the way which you really like shout loudly that, you know, we've, that, that Mavericks is, you know, kind of out of the forge and we have a, a game type that's uh, kind of absolutely best in class and we're bringing online, you know, the, the kind of the other game types and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, all these things that we're wrapping up into the kind of full launch of the game post forge. Um, we ha we're not going to say you know, the final date for that now. Uh, we previously structured it as beta and then launch in December. That's not the structure we're going for now. So it's kind of forge evolving to the point where you, know, you could maybe consider it like a launch game in December. Yeah. But um, what we say is the launch is something which we will, you know, we'll talk about it in, in a few weeks time as we've kind of shown everyone the forge and the, and the velocity that we're going for in the forge and how rapidly we're, we're developing. Uh, once people have seen that, we'll talk about kind of what that means for when we kind of push Mavericks to these other, you know, through these other milestones. Okay. To me, this sounds like we probably shouldn't expect full release by the end of the year. However, it also sounds like if we're still in the forge at the end of the year, it's going to look markedly different from what we see in just over a week's time. Will footage recorded during the portion of the forge under the NDA become releasable once the NDA is lifted? Um, my initial answer on that would be no, I mean, it, we'll have, I'll have to discuss that. Um, the NDA but, is something that we will yeah, clear up a lot closer to the time The as well. idea of the initial NDA is that the first few weeks of the Forge um, will see some shifts that, you know, if, if people were posting content all, the, all over the kind of internet about it, would kind of be uh, confusing or misleading about what the game is. Yeah. You know, because of course the first few updates are simply going to be so core cool, um, that like we have kind of got so little in the map initially. Uh, compared to what's going to be in a few weeks after that. 
The rate um, of iteration is, a you know, thing. as it changes from one week to you, two weeks, it's you kind of have to expect difference. the first few weeks of the Fords just to be like, oh, like, you know, this is really back to basics in many respects. Now we're looking at some core cool things being done in a very exciting way, and we know a lot of players in the game, and we're polishing a few things, but there'll be a lot of unpolished stuff in there. So mm. that's why we have that NDA in the first few few weeks, just because we do want people talking about Mavics as soon as you know as soon as possible, and obviously we. Uh, we also want to be as accommodating to you know content creators and everyone who's spending their time in Mavericks as possible. Um, we need those first few weeks to kind of um, ensure that we're setting expectations correctly with people, um, which means um, when we open it up um, and you can now record footage, I would expect at the very least we would say hold on. Like if you have old footage about Mavericks, um, you still cannot necessarily post that. Although perhaps you know once the game's been fully launched, we would say, yeah, all your archive footage could now go out. You can, you know, tell people yeah, what it was we can like. Look, look back on yeah, look how back far on. we've come. Once at it's that clear point. once we've kind of it's clear that we've put the right yeah. messaging out. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the other thing. So something that also gets asked a lot. It, the NDA isn't for the entire length of the no, forge period. No, absolutely this not. isn't yeah. this is just initial kinks yes. out of the way, yes. rapid iteration. Once yes. we reach the point where it's we're comfortable sharing, that is yes. fine. It's not the entire period, don't worry, yeah. content creators, you're not here yeah. until December, yeah. January looking for content. Yeah. That's fine. I think having a non-disclosure agreement at the start of the Forge is a very good thing. There are a handful of members of the community that are complaining about having an NDA at all, but really I just think they're thinking about themselves and their ability to be able to stream the game straight away. As one of the more active Mavericks content creators, I'm totally in favour of the NDA because I would hate to see what could be an amazing game damaged by content getting out early when there are still a few bugs to iron out. And really that would do no one any favours. Are there any plans to reintroduce the weekly developer diaries or will these be replaced by something else, such as change logs, release or mm -hmm. patch notes? Here we are. <laughs> so while we, yeah, so the, you know, we were talking about uh, the fact that we need to be pushing out weekly content to everyone. You know, we've, um, We've been doing a lot of things from a development perspective over the last couple of months. Um, I think the roadmap we have for Mavericks and how we're going to be building it and the technology we have uh, and the way we're building the game, they're all incredibly exciting and we've been making sure we get, we've got those things right and now I think we're ready to um, kind of storm forward and, and kind of bring everyone and get them involved. Um, what that means, of course, is that, you know, looking at the last couple of months, uh, the regularity of communicating about what we're doing is not where it needs to be. No. So. Um, that doesn't mean that we'll be doing making Mavericks necessarily at the rate that you know uh, we were doing it originally. I think that that's kind of uh, a series which has a lot of benefits, but I think it's um, much more effective and actually just you know easier for us to kind of just do community FAQs and show you know various shorter videos and clips of what we're doing yeah. around the office because that means we're not kind of going between everyone and trying to piece together an episode of something. Yeah. It's, e it's easier on both sides. People get a direct answer to a direct question that you mm. guys are after. Mm. And it's easier for us to do in the office. And we make sure that the content we put out is things that people are actually mm. asking for. And yeah. I think, yeah, no, we, d we have heard mm -hmm. on Reddit and YouTube and such that content, you know, you want more communication. We do need to put out stuff. And this is something that we are heavily aware of. Mm -hmm. And it is something that we are yeah. actively yeah. working towards. We're also building up a, a much larger community management and you know, overall community team. Um, you know, we're expanding the company. Mavericks is a very exciting project. Uh, so over the next few months, you should see kind of more and more resource dedicated to this. And that's obviously going to make a massive difference. Yeah, it, again, if you want to come work with me, you feel free to check out the Automaton Careers page. More than welcome to come and join me. I could use some company in the office. <laughs> As I mentioned at the start of this video, I'm delighted to hear this. If Automaton can put out a video like this every week, just simply answering community questions and explaining updates, and then perhaps also a making Mavericks video even just once a month or so, I think that is going to be a wholesale difference to how the community feels about their communication and about the game. Communication like this is crucial to having the community on board. How long for duos and squads? As we did initially announce that it was just going to be solo initially, but yeah. we're aware that people do want these quite a lot. And it's not a very difficult thing for us to deliver technically, um, of course. It's largely the same game with a few extra features around uh, mm -hmm. you know, squads. Um, it's a good point. I, I don't have a number in my head right now, uh, just because 
I've really not th thought through kind of what that means for our current roadmap of testing individual features. Yes. I would say that's something we want to get in relatively soon because we know this is a game we're building for more than just solo players. It is towards the top um, of the list. Yes, it's, it, I'd say it's towards the top of the list. That doesn't give me a timeline in mind, but it's definitely something we'll bear in mind and uh, we'll try and get back to you on that as soon as possible. Excellent. Yeah, I think that needs to be a priority for the team. A lot of players only like to play with friends and simply won't play if duos or squads aren't available early on. I'd personally like to see those modes available by the time the Forge opens up to non-founders at the latest. How are you combating players using lower quality settings to gain advantage over people that want to play the game in its natural beauty? And I believe this is something Spatial OS also helps with as but far as uh, That's something that terrain. we've been doing, um, we've been looking at with a kind of engine perspective as well. Networking is, is a big part of this and what we're doing with Spatial OS, but as is kind of combining that correctly with the rendering side of things and the, mm -hmm. the game engine side. Uh, we spent some time with the Crytek team in Frankfurt looking at rendering very carefully and how we render things in the distance. We have some like new approaches which aren't really used by other games out there right now that enable us to render stuff very efficiently that's further away from you, uh, and that massively ties into this problem. So uh, I think the basic answer is that you know lower quality settings won't give you an advantage um, for the first couple of weeks of the forge. You know that we may be testing all sorts of things. So, you know, so uh, perhaps there's uh, you know still some some things running out. But I know that the, the approach we're using and what we'll have. Um, we'll get rid of that problem. Yeah. So you'll be able to play in low settings and it won't give you that form of advantage. We consider that in terms of how we approach the graphics of the game. Very important. That's, again, excellent. I'm sure a lot of people were looking forward to hearing that. I'm so pleased that James sees this as a problem. It's actually beyond ridiculous that it's used as a way of gaining an advantage in PUBG or any other game for that matter. And as So Broken's question says, the Mavericks world is going to be stunning to look at. So we should all have the highest settings we can to enjoy that aspect of the game. What kind of tools will you be giving us so that we can officially report bugs and exploits? Again, this ties into not being able to record footage or necessarily at least release it public. How are we going to be? Yeah, you, yeah exactly. The, we do need to talk about um, that process. Um, I need to ask the right people. I think I, off the top of my head, I'm not sure what the flow is for that. There'll be something which um, I know our uh, UI and gameplay team will have looked at. Um, we need to consider that. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, we will let you know but before we launch it. There will definitely be a nice there will way be a to process. do it. It's not yes. a, we're not just yeah. going to have a Discord channel or something like that. Don't worry about it. No. I probably would have liked to have seen a more solid answer to this question. With a little over 10 days until the forge starts for founders, I would have thought that this process might be in place already. Bug and exploit reporting needs to be easy and straightforward for players. And we probably also need somewhere we can send screenshots or footage of that kind of thing, bearing in mind that it will only be shareable with the devs while under the NDA. Will there be a ranking system in place or leaderboards? Um, there will be some form of progression in place even in the early parts of the forge because we want you know to be able to recognize you for taking part in the kind of testing of the game as well as just it's a part that makes the game fun yeah. um, so we will announce that shortly just as we're about to go out with the initial forge launch okay. there will be uh, you know some kind of in initial progression system um, it won't be the same as in the final game. There will be some way to translate your awards into the final game, though not necessarily directly, but uh, yes, there will be some kind of system in place. Whether that's specifically a ranking system, I'm not sure, but we'll get back to you. Okay. From James' answer, it sounds like we probably won't have ranking until full release of the game, which is a bit of a shame. I know there are a lot of founders in the Mavericks Discord who have followed this game from the beginning and have formed a friendly community and we'd all like to see how we rank compared to each other. Now we've been chatting about that for a few months so I hope that they can bring in ranking sometime soon rather than later but I guess don't hold your breath for that one. Great to hear that some progression will be part of the game from the start though. What design is the weapon handling process following such as recoil patterns or random recoil or a combination of both? We support a combination of both. Uh, we've tried out combinations of both. Um, we have the ability to also rapidly tweak any of that stuff. Um, so the answer to that is some combination of both initially, depending on the gun. I believe Lawrence, the designer who 
worked on this, may have posted some stuff with the community yeah, around that. Yeah, we, but we have answered some of these. It may have been in the Discord, it yeah, may have been yeah. lost to the sands of time, but um, we can dig this out potentially. Yeah, so um, give us feedback on that when you're, when you're playing with the guns. I think there are obviously different considerations about um, you know, when a fixed recall pattern is something that's that, that's fitting and it's, it's a piece of mastery that you can do in a quite consistent way versus the kind of randomization and, and, and other parts to the recoil and spread um, that all cause like slightly different effects as to whether a gun, the level of mastery of the gun mm -hmm. versus how the game becomes fun because you can't guarantee a hit and the different ranges. And um, So we have thought about all these different things and we can tweak all of these different things. Um, and I would definitely expect those things to change throughout the forge based on uh, both feedback and also we have um, stats. Uh, we, statistics. We can, I mean, we're doing yeah. a lot of data analysis on this. Excellent. Gunplay is going to be a huge thing for a lot of players. It could be a game breaker or winner for many people, but it sounds like this will go through some iterations anyway. Now, James talked about Lawrence Barnett, the senior game designer, mentioning details about this, and I've copied what Lawrence wrote on the Mavericks forum into the video description below and also provided you with a link to the original post. But his overall statement was that they've created a pseudo-realistic shooting experience in Mavericks that takes the best of the slick shooting gameplay of Call of Duty and Battlefield, but adds a flick of strong mastery and realism. I think this sounds like a pretty good approach. Having played the Battlefield 5 beta in the last few days, I would like to see Maverick's gunplay being very close to that, where it requires a high level of skill, but the recoil is learnable, and this allows there to be a very high skill ceiling. Players should have the ability to dedicate time to becoming good and be able to demonstrate their skills over unskilled players. I'd also like random bullet spread to be minimal. A small amount might be okay, but it does concern me a little that Lawrence also mentioned that long to medium range engagements require patience and great accuracy as the impact of the slight random influence on the gun naturally scales with difference and that the spread will also need to be controlled so fast automatic fire is going to be vague. I'm absolutely fine with fast automatic fire being vague at distance, however I'd also like to know that if I aim a sniper rifle correctly then I can hit a target over a very long distance every single time. I believe player skill should not be negated by random bullet deviation. Do you know when we will either be notified who got in the early founders playtest or when it's starting? This has been somewhat cleared up earlier. Mm -hmm. The 1,000 players initial test isn't happening. Um, this is something that could potentially be looked into a day or two before from what we gathered, but you don't have to sit and stare at your inbox. Don't worry, an, e an email will go out uh, later on, but it won't be in regards to early play testing before the 20th, as far as we're aware. Mm -hmm. um, what visual cues, if any, are there for hitting a shot on a player? Will there be blood indicators, hit markers, or damage numbers? Or something along those lines? Uh, we're looking at that right now actually. Um, the UI feedback for hitting a player, which will exist. Um, I don't believe, we have even talked about damage numbers but that's not, it's not, it's kind of interesting because that you've got this realistic style of, of Mavericks where you yeah. wouldn't think like a numbers, loaded, numbers would a make sense. Weird. But at the same time we kind of have this like uh, AR like operating system feel to the UI. Um, we have a new UI that no one's seen, which is, you know, yet, and we, we used some sort of beta stuff before in the, in the kind of very early footage people have seen, so you won't have seen the latest kind of uh, UI yet. We'll be sharing that with you soon. Okay, so before James finishes, we now know there will be a brand new UI in the game. So the one you see here in pre-alpha footage is going to change. Um, and we're going for this kind of like AR feel, um, and it, it kind of would make sense to have numbers in that, but uh, it's still a very extreme thing to do. <laughs> so I, uh, so initially, as far as I'm aware, there are indicators. Yeah. Indicators know, will exist. For um, exactly. What you know, and it gives is. you feedback. Um, but again, like uh, that's still kind of something we're testing, and we'll even still be testing in the forge. So we'll see where that goes. Okay. It's hard to know what James actually means by an augmented reality user interface. So we might just have to wait and see for that. Now, there's always going to be quite a wide range of opinions about things like hit markers. And you're never going to satisfy everyone because some will want no hit markers at all, others just want to see blood splatters, 
and others will want blood splatters along with numbers like Battlefield users. Maybe this will be something that changes quite a lot as we progress through the forge. Uh, final one for this one is, uh, will there be leaning mechanics? Now, uh, uh, yeah, you can I sit right next now. to the animators, so yeah. I've, seen a, I've seen a lot of leaning going on. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. You can lean now, I think, so yes. Yes, I believe that is it. So there's going to be leaning right from the start, which is great. Personally, I much prefer the auto leaning that Battlefield incorporates because it's intuitive to do when you approach an object and want to peek around the corner. And I also think that it looks really stupid in PUBG to see players standing out in the middle of an open space and unrealistically leaning over as a defensive tactic to reduce how much of their body can be hit because most guns have a strong vertical recoil. However, perhaps that's just me. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts about leaning in the comments below. Okay, that wraps up my thoughts on the Q&A. It's awesome that Automaton are stepping up their communication. Well done. And I look forward to the next video from them. Please also share your opinions about the Q&A as well. Lastly, if you want to get your hands on the game as soon as possible, you'll need to purchase a Founders Pack for around $30 from the Mavericks website, which is mavericks.gg so you can start playing from September 20. Now if you found this video helpful, please consider leaving a like or a dislike if you didn't, and if you'd like to support this channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. It's just the night